All right, so I'm uh, James Kokoska. Uh, I want to start out saying a few things. Uh, one is, uh, you know, I'm not going to stand here like a Wi Fi poser. Uh, the, uh, most of you folks have forgotten more than I know uh, about Wi Fi. Uh, I don't have a C in my title, except for maybe a computer science degree. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to talk about our direction in technology, but you're going to see screenshots. We're not talking about the product that's going to surround these. That'll happen later this year. Uh, but I want to see, uh, show you the types of problems that we're solving uh, and, the, and the technological direction that we're, that we're going in. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, since I don't have uh, uh, any, uh, I want to try to build a little bit of street credibility with you. So if you'll indulge me for a minute, I'll uh, I just want to kind of introduce my, my background. Uh, so I, I don't have uh, uh, any great Wi-Fi experience. Uh, however, uh, I have a lot of RF experience. I uh, actually started as a as a, a kid in the uh, early 70s. Uh, uh, my homebrew 60-watt uh, illegal linear amplifier, uh, uh, building all kinds of stuff. Uh, and uh, and I think my most my most prized possession off my whole bench in my in my basement, my mom's basement, uh, was was my oscilloscope. And I think it was largely because it it gave me visibility into into electricity and what was going on, right, compared to a, a voltmeter. So well, well, fortuitously for me, uh, Hewlett Packard, the division that makes oscilloscopes and then logic analyzers, was just across town. And so uh, being the hometown boy, I. I got on there as a double E in, in 1979, uh, and it was just as the world was changing, right? If you think, when I think about the 80s, I think about digital, right? We we entered with with the uh, with barely an IBM PC, and we and we as we exited the Pentium was on the drawing board, and so uh, so at Hewlett Packard, uh, and and in the early days, uh, there were these measurement domains, uh, uh, analog time, <coughs> data, and firmware. Uh, as processes were being developed, and uh, but but they were separate, uh, they were separate tools, uh, and and very little uh, connection between them. Uh, of course, in test and measurement, we were going digital too. So our analog oscilloscopes, we were literally building these these analog bottles in, in building A, uh, uh, were going digital also, which allowed us to change up form factors, but brought a whole benefit of, of digital benefits, right? We had automated measurements. You used to have to do that with a grease pencil and look at, look at count grid ticks, uh, waveform memories. Uh, this is where I did my first Fourier transform uh, as we introduced spectrum analysis into this product. Uh, and, uh, and, and I've always had a, 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 a passion for visibility. So. Uh, so I was uh, there. You know, back then, of course, there was no web. Uh, there were there were journals, and so IBM and Digital and HP every quarter or so would pound their chests with their technology prowess. And so, uh, so I was honored to to, to get the cover of uh, of the uh, HP journal uh, for a uh, for a visibility uh, digital oscilloscope persistence technique that I had generated. Well, turns out 80s are ripping along. Uh, now we're getting into multiple bus PCs. Logic analysis is brewing up, but had this bottleneck. Uh, we were starting to link tools together to connect analog to timing to state to, to firmware. Uh, and so we, we created a little catchy phrase called HLOAD, hierarchical levels of abstraction transcended. Uh, and, and so created this, started working on this system where you could put together processing models and basically time correlate multiple base buses looking in, in, in multiple ways. Uh, uh, came out was was really well received, uh, and, and again, all about visualization, analysis, solving problems faster. Right, that's just been, just been the the, the direction all along. So, uh, I was uh, actually honored a few years later, uh, again with the, the cover of the HP Journal, uh, and uh, and uh, actually got some nice uh, accolades from from my friends. I think my favorite uh, being tenacity it takes a lot of tenacity to to push the poop through the goose, uh, but. Uh, uh, but uh, but, it, but it was actually too late. It, it, I, I think I'd spent my tenacity and I was just kind of emotionally bankrupt. So I went over to a small startup in a strip mall called uh, Forte Networks uh, in 1995 and uh, conceived the first uh, 10100 Ethernet tester. Uh, now, this is touchscreen. Uh, which and 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 Fluke was OEMing it. You can imagine they didn't like touch. They how are you going to use it with a glove? How's it? It's going to get scratched up, uh, etc. And, and really, the state of the art in the touch at the time was PDAs or like the like the Palm Pilot. But uh, uh, 
but uh, pushed through. I got the one touch out there, very much beloved uh, product, uh, and uh, got some patents out of that. Uh, so, so, so we've had this kind of history of innovation, uh, and uh, but, but, but largely I've been on the wireline side, right? Uh, and and uh, and so. Uh, all that changed about 18 months ago as we began the, the carve out, right? Suddenly I was, I, uh, the, the, the wireless side landed in my lap, right? So, uh, so I had to start thinking about that a little bit and, and where we're going uh, roadmap wise. So, uh, and I think one of the first things that struck me was, was <laughs> man, these guys are stuck at layer two. Uh, and, and I was like, well, well, you know, and so I'd, I'd look at all these tools and I was like, just these goofy Mac dresses. And the craziest thing was, was my Samsung phone is actually, the S10s are actually Maratas, right? Uh, light on, this is a, an ODM, right? They, they, they're an original design manufacturer for radios for others. But, but you know, and, th and this is you know, more true right now, right? The, the, the clients are kind of the new battleground. IOTs bring on a lot of people that are just putting second, third party cards in, right? And, and rarely now will the MAC address match the nameplate on, on the thing you're looking for. And so uh, one, one that struck out to me specifically was, was this Hanhai. I was like, what's, what's, what's this Hanhai thing? So, you know, I do what you do, which is you go look at the standards body and you say, well, who's, who's got Hanhai? And it turns out there's there's 272 references to, uh, they, they own 272 blocks of MAC addresses. And, and, and somewhere around 66, I got my first clue. Oh, it's, it's Foxconn, uh, you know, which is you know, the fifth largest employer, maybe even the fourth now uh, in, in the world. And uh, of course, they make the iPhone, but they make so many things for, for so many companies. And, 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 and their and these Mac blocks that they own are used in those products. So I was like, well, that, that's interesting. So really, really felt like, what, what's, what's going on here, right? We, we certainly cracked this nut over on digital system design and, and fused together these things so you could be looking at, at an overshoot problem in analog and see what software was causing it uh, or a particular uh, t uh, uh, timing violation and understand the, the state of the machine at that time. We, we certainly on the wired side had a full stack view, right? I can, I can, uh, I can do everything from layer one uh, through, uh, through layer seven, right? Physical to session. Uh, and, but, but on the Wi-Fi side, there just seemed to be this, this, this barrier. And I was like, what, what's, what, what is this? So, you know, knowing that, that all, all good organizations work out with mantras, right? Didn't work out for the Alamo, but, uh, but uh, you know, we're doing Link Sprinter, uh, said, uh, uh, hey, you know, let, if you just want to dis define something, what you're doing, say, hey, fits in a watch pocket, right? That, that was the design goal. That's, that's how you communicate it easily. So, so we kind of coined the phrase, hey, what if we could break the layer two ceiling, right? So, so that, that became a, 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 an effort. Uh, and so, uh, so it started to realize, well, you know, if we could just get to an IP address, well, well, that would be great because there's a whole set of tools you could use uh, on the IP side. And, you know, for example, I could understand what ports are open, both UDP and, and TCP, and I would see maybe some printer ports are open, and I would know that then this is a printer. Uh, and then having an IP address, we could go out and query these devices, and we could say, hey, what's your name, right? And it might be that we learn this through SNMP, through uh, MDNS, which is largely Apple, uh, and uh, or NetBIOS, traditional Windows laptops. And so, uh, so that's interesting. And so, and, and by the way, this is an actual example out of out of our uh, that, that I that I chased this down. So, and ended up figuring out, heck, this this is a printer. It's a, it's a BRW something, right? And and then started to realize, well, all right. So 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 we're, we're upping our visibility here. But and and so rather than just having this representation of a client on a tool, that we could present a, a fuller picture of what's going on uh, with, that, with that tool. But uh, it, you know, it kind of started, kept getting more interesting. Uh, well, you know, it may, maybe, this, maybe this printer isn't, isn't, uh, isn't talking much, right? So if you're trying to locate it in an RF sense, it's kind of hard if you got to sit there for 15 seconds between it, it sending a packet, right? So, well, hey, what if now that we have an IP address, we, we can ping it, right? And we can coax it out onto the network. Uh, it, it'll put an RF footprint out. Now I can easily locate it. Uh, if uh, if uh, 
if we have an IP address, we have a whole suite of intellectual property around doing layer two and layer three path analysis. I mean, you know layer three, that's trace route. Uh, but layer two means mining the, the switch forwarding tables, the MAC forwarding tables, uh, and understanding the exact topology and connection. And maybe we could even augment it and understand what APs are between us and it. And so I could be sitting with a tool wondering where this BRW is living and and just see exactly where, what it's going through, what APs into what switches, exactly which ports, in port 12, out port one, uh, out into another AP, and, and oh look, it's connected wirelessly. Uh, and, and so that, that's kind of cool, I can start to find it, but it's also a path with, with benefits. In other words, as we understand this path and each of the elements in the topology, uh, we can start to under query the, the devices in that path and start to uh, understand, hey, what kind of utilization are they seeing? Have they seen any errors, right? An error is, 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 is death and wired, right? That's, that's bad. That's bad media, uh, typically. Uh, or, uh, or, or just discards. That's congestion. Uh, and, and, and maybe there's times you just want to know about the mix uh, because it's not about the number of packets, but why are so many multicasts? Uh, so. So uh, uh, another thing that started to come out of, out of having an IP address was, was an arsenal of problem detection uh, algorithms that we have for determining what's going on. And so suddenly, uh, you're starting to see, hey, it, it's not just about the RF, but, but I might see a half duplex uh, uh, interface somewhere along the route. Or I may see that the AP just rebooted uh, an hour ago. Or, or there's a duplicate IP somewhere, or a bad subnet, or some discard somewhere in the network. So all these, you know, once you, you kind of crack that layer two ceiling, all these, all these traditional network engineer tools become available to you. Uh, as you, uh, as you go a little further, uh, you do a port scan, you see, hey, port 80 is open. Wow, I can launch my browser against it. Uh, and, and, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, this, this, this is a printer. Uh, and uh, I knew that from the ports, but, but I, even more so, right? And, and I can see the ink levels uh, because, you know, printers out of the box are, you know, chatty and open because they want to work with everything. Uh, and so, I, well, that's pretty cool. And, and by the way, if, if the VNC port was open, you could, you could fire up a view into it that way too. Uh, and in and, and this whole world, once you have an IP address for your Wi-Fi clients, uh, uh, really starts to open up where, uh, of SNMP, where you can understand the interfaces, the MIBs, suddenly I can see the full description. It's actually a brother printer. I know the firmware version. Uh, I can understand the interfaces, how they're connected into the network, uh, go into any one interface stat. Uh, understand it, its connection, understand, and, and this actually kind of amazed me, the, 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 the address footprint of this single printer was, was phenomenal. This thing was grabbing IPv6 addresses like they were, like they were well, you know, they're supposed to be an infinite pool, so apparently they, they took that to heart. Uh, so, uh, so SNMP w was open. So we really started to, to think that, wow, we, we can build this, this system, this next generation tool that, that would allow you to sort of go between the RF side and the things that you need to do there, capture and locate and understand RF and traffic stats and rates and capabilities and all the stuff on the RF side. But we could allow you to basically see it from the wired side. So you can understand its interfaces, SNMP. You might want to capture with, in Wi-Fi, you might want to capture on the wireline side. Uh, ping, path, uh, browse. Uh, and so uh, this ability to present both views and allow you to to switch between them on the client side is, was really a, a, a key uh, mission uh, uh, from a technology standpoint for us. The, uh, so you just start to realize that as, we, as we punch through the ceiling, there's just a, a, a slew of things. Uh, and, and I think there's even more, right? We're just getting started. But, but basically, I went from wondering what, what's a Han high to realizing that I was low on black ink uh, on, on this mystery device uh, on our Wi-Fi. So, uh, so that was pretty cool. Uh, all right, so uh, I, I'm probably a little ahead of schedule, but this is so this is the breaking point for the for the video. So uh, so I'm James Kokoska, CTO at NetAlly. Uh, so in the last section, we talked more about clients. Now I'm going to switch to the infrastructure view and what and what we're doing there. Uh, 
Boy, when I think infrastructure, I, I just think of Lee Badman's uh, napkin. <laughs> I mean, th this, this, this just nailed it. Uh, and, and uh, you know, because Wi-Fi gets blamed for everything, and, and it could be a DHCP server's down, it's Wi-Fi's fault, right? Uh, gateway routers, internet's slow, Wi-Fi's fault. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just how it is. And, and I, I got to tell you, I mean, it, it, it's complicated. You know, it's, you know I, I feel like you're barely getting your head around 20, 40, 80, 160 megahertz channels. And, and then next thing you know, you see that, oh, yeah, yeah, AX added. 2,800 uh, new new rates, uh, or uh, in the middle here, this is uh, our decode of the AX beacon, uh, and uh, uh, and 80 new information elements. Kind of overwhelming. I don't even know what any of these are. Hopefully, in the future, uh, you folks will give us some guidance that that maybe when uh, this this is false and that's true. Uh, that that's a problem, right? And that'll become a, a new problem for us to, to solve. But uh, but you know it's complicated. And then and then on the client side, just I mean, randomized Mac clients. You know, to sit there in a chamber with one thing and suddenly see you have stations. And 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 you know, and they are randomized. It's really hard to understand what's legit. I mean, I guess one of the things that really uh, surprises me about the Wi-Fi space is is uh, you know on the wired side, it's, you know, we thought the the Mac was the universal uh, uh, universally unique identifier for any anything, right? And Wi-Fi, oh, it's like, oh, we need seven BSS IDs. We'll just rip through the second octet and and and, and trance on everybody. Well, we want to we want to randomize your your client. We're just going to generate whatever darn address we want. It, it, it's it's actually quite quite fascinating. So, kind of overwhelming. Uh, at times when I'm overwhelmed, I, I seek comfort. So I think, oh well, you know. I knew what shared media was on the wired side, right? And in fact, exploited it in a patent uh, where basically it was, you know, utilization versus percentage or versus collisions defines quadrants of, of goodness or badness. Uh, and, then, and then I have these moments where I'm like, uh, and this is at Keith's uh, uh, WLPC uh, conference a few months ago where uh, Ben talked about exactly the same thing on the Wi Fi side. How, how, you know, it's not just utilization. You can have high utilization with low retries, and that's okay. The same way that we could have high utilization without collisions on the wireline side. So I thought, well, that, that's pretty cool. Uh, and so we, you know, kind of took that to heart and went back and, you know, as we started to look at our channel map, uh, said, hey, what if instead of just showing utilization, non-utilization, and APs, we added in retries, and we added in clients, which are two of the KPIs uh, that, uh, that Ben pointed out. So, uh, well, that's pretty cool. What a, what a great overall view of your network, right? So this is, this is kind of our, our visibility, right? This is, you know, I, I know it's a architecture word, but, but you know, we, we really believe it under the hood. So, uh, so you're going to start to see things like this you know, emerge in the products, which I think will give you a more uh, holistic view of, of your network. Uh, another kind of corollary is in infrastructure. So, uh, so in my previous life, right, the, it was, you all remember this, remember the self-healing network? You know, uh, that, was, uh, that was a mantra uh, as we entered the, the century. Uh, and it was about spanning tree uh, to some extent. And, and, and so we knew how to detect Spanning tree problems, right? And that, and that, and it turns out you might be working on a Wi-Fi thing, and you actually got some switch issues, right, in in in, in your infrastructure. So, uh, well, you know, about about a year and a half ago, uh, all of a sudden, uh, TAC started getting calls that that we were reporting uh, m multiple APs, but they were the same AP, and and so it, well, it turns out our notion of an AP was a was a, a, a BSS ID on a channel, right? That 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 together. So each time this thing started channel hopping, uh, you know, under the, under the mantra, I think the uh, marketing word here is proactive intelligent channel switching, right? Uh, but as you know, that all the vendors support this. We realized, hey, you know, that, that's kind of like spanning tree on the wired side that, that on the Wi-Fi side, if an AP sitting there flipping channels, and we, and we saw some of this stuff come in. We had, a, we had one customer that had an air check just fill up with APs in about, in about an hour, right? And, and they knew they had 10. Uh, so, uh, so this thing's just bouncing around. So, so we said, hey, maybe we should turn that into a 
problem, right? And so, so we said, hey, let, let's, mount, let's knock it out as a problem. Let's track the channel changes. Let's give you a threshold for what your tolerance is for seeing this. I could put a two in there if I wanted to. And, and so trying to kind of watch what's going on, trying to keep up with the, with the modern problems that, that, that uh, we believe you're, you're facing. Uh, so, so it's really, you know, like I showed it on the client, right, and kind of breaking the layer two ceiling. We also are trying to put a, a holistic view around, around the, the access point, right? And so, so sometimes you want to see it from the RF side and understand the SSIDs, uh, BSSIDs, channels, and, and clients uh, that that AP is operating on. But sometimes you want to understand it from the wired side and what's going on with its interfaces, what addresses it's consuming on the network, uh, and things like that. And so again, we, we allow you to sort of pivot between those views using the, anytime you see the underlined blue thing, uh, and, uh, and basically bounce to, to fully understand not only the RF side, but, but, the, but the infrastructure behind it. And, and so, because, because sometimes you're worried about the rates and capabilities on the left, and other times you're worried about the addresses or the VLANs or or, or the utilization on the ports. And so having one tool in your hand where you can see all this, the infrastructure side and, and the RF side, is, is, a, is a major uh, technological direction for us. Another place we try to, uh, try to sort of fuse the two worlds together is, is in auto test, right? So uh, if you think about uh, Lee's napkin and, you know, and testing these services, uh, then, then you know the reality is once you get above layer two, right? It's on wired. It's PoE link. What switch I'm connected to on Wi-Fi? It's it's uh, SSID and channels and, and APs. But after that, it, it ought to be the same, right? And we ought to treat it uniformly. We shouldn't, you know. I, I think what happened in, previously is. Uh, organization is we just had a lot of silos, right? So the yeah, American guys were over here, and, and we were over here, and the OptiView guys were over there, right? And and uh, and it just never fused. So while we had these these nice bodies of of, of, of intellectual property and discovery and airwise and things like that, they just never they just never came together in, in a single place. So uh, another thing that we believe is essential is. is is in the same auto test when you when you're going to Google, you know, you know I've seen this right. When we're just doing a Synac, I don't know if I hit the captive portal or actually hit the, the website I'm going to. If there's a firewall or any of that, right? Because you may get a redirect. You, you you have no idea. So so we focused on the on the the tap to glass end user response time. Call it what you want, but. Uh, Focus on for any given service test, and you can put any port, uh, but in this case HTTP or FTP or things like that, uh, that we should break it down. Because you might be getting throttled for, hey, that website is slow. But it's not a data transfer problem. It's a data start problem. The server is, data start is how long it takes it for it to utter the, the HTTP header back to you, right, as, as, as a tool, as a client. Uh, so so need to give you that whole visibility, you know, because a lot of times, Network engineering is, is a blame game, and so you know we need to give you the, the ammo you need to, uh, to 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 solve these things. Let's go further, though. Hey, you know you, you did this HTTP thing. What if we what if we what if we let you actually say what return code you expected? Uh, because it might be that you don't want to let them get there, and you and you're expecting a 404, and that's a pass, right? Because you're trying to firewall. There's a security thing here, or any string, so you can literally take a string on the screen and put it in here and say, "Hey, when I when I'm when I think I'm going to this URL, I expect this string to be in the in the HTTP content, right? The, the whole thing, not just the header, uh, anywhere in there, right? And so, and it kind of lets you work in this in this in this two by two of uh, where you can kind of verify that." Uh, or see that things are blocked, or verify they're blocked, and kind of do security stuff, kind of through uh, specifying. But but if I say, hey, I'm going to pull Google, and it must not contain Google, then you know we turn our little icon and and our always bubble things up to, to red, and tell you what's going on, right? So so you can kind of start to see some security aspects to this thing, from you know making sure that firewalls, captive portals, proxies, you know all these. Network appliances that can that can get in your way, uh, you know that they are in fact working or or not working. Uh, go a little further. 
uh, test targets. Uh, in fact, it, it was ironic. This is my standard set of tests of, of if you, it, these are all the four ways to get in and out of uh, Gmail, right? Uh, there's SMT and POP, uh, IMAP, uh, and so, uh, so I, I run this test everywhere I go. And in fact, I was just in the lobby here running this, and it turns out this guy was failing. He was red, right? So somebody might just have this weird thing where my Gmail doesn't seem to go out. It's just stuck in the, in the, in the, in the sent, not sent, in the uh, outbox. Uh, and so, uh, uh, so in, in, and if you take the time to define these tests, they ought to be available on the wired or the Wi-Fi side, right? Again, breaking down these silos. If you, a service, as we sort of showed in the audit test, it doesn't matter what's, you know, layer three below, it's got to be uh, uh, agnostic. Uh, it's transport agnostic. Uh, and, and if you define a certain set of profiles, you ought to be able to group them together so that if you're validating a trunk port to an AP, you can, be a, you can test on all three VLANs, or you can test on three different BSSIDs, or you can test on three different SSIDs, or you can test on a combination of wired and Wi-Fi. Uh, and so really trying to, trying to again, sort of, sort of uh, make it easier to use, and, and easy use is key for us, and, and, but kind of fusing these wired and, and, and Wi-Fi worlds. Of course, uh, you know, there's no substitute, as, as most of you probably know, for user antics. Uh, and so, uh, so we've sprinkled and think about how to how to bring some of those you know, out in the box. So a, a classic one is you know, some guy decides he needs a little, couple extra ports, needs another port on his desk, right? And brings in his, his he got his new re Resi router, so he brings in the old one, you know, doesn't know any better, plugs in, plugs out. Oh, next thing you know, you got a 192.168.0 DHCP server on your network doling out addresses. And, and, and anybody who comes in anew, once that thing is in the network, is, is suddenly not in your subnet anymore, right? And, and they can't get connectivity. Uh, and so we have things like a second offer uh, detection uh, in DHCP under the hood where we can say, hey, here, here, here's your, you know, you've got the second offer, there's your primary. What's kind of nice though is you can do a path analysis to the, to the, to the, 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 the DHCP server that shouldn't be there and understand where it's connected, right? Oh. That's actually connected on you know port 43 of this switch. Uh, oh, maybe you look at your map. Maybe you see that oh that that's that's so and so. Uh, you go go hunt them down. Uh, maybe they didn't bring in a DHCP server, but they wanted a couple of extra ports for gaming at lunchtime, right? Uh, and so they. Uh, so they uh, brought in a little. You know, yeah, that's part of the problem with IP. It used to be exclusive, right? You had to have be a Cisco client, let's say. Uh, you know, now you just need to go to uh, Best Buy and with 20 bucks in your pocket, and bam, you, you got a port expander on your desk, right? Uh, so uh, so uh, uh, algorithms and focus around detecting these antics, uh, in this case, an unknown switch. And since it's transparent, right, uh, and not managed, uh, we have a limited view, but we can see from all the other things that we under how what what it's connected into, and in fact, this switch is hanging off of port 10 of of, of the managed switch, and so we can give you a pretty good idea. Uh, typically, what I actually see is you see the uh, a, a well-known device uh, like a NetBIOS PC, like in a corporate environment. They bring the switch in, they plug it in, they plug their laptop in, they, they, uh, they plug whatever else they want to do uh, in, and, uh, and you'll actually see their, their, their NetBIOS uh, laptop name there. So, uh, so pulling back a little more to, to infrastructure, right? Switches and routers and, and such. Uh, you know, this, this has always been uh, ground zero for us on the wired side. And so being able to basically give you this sort of a view into your switches, uh, all the addresses, all the VLANs, all the ports, to be able to drill in, uh, actually see the VLAN descriptions, drill into any of the interfaces, see SNMP, who, where it is, who owns it, how long it's been up, understanding if any of the ports have experienced any errors or discards along the way. So. Uh, uh, and, and probably one of the best parts of, of, of the infrastructure uh, uh, technologies are, are, uh, are being able to uh, drill in uh, to the interfaces, uh, sorting any way you want, uh, go into a specific port, and then start to trend things. So this is actually, I, I was, 
the other uh, week, I was like, wow, my speed test is really slow, right? What's going on? Uh, but, and I thought for sure it was my ISP uh, or router, because uh, I live rurally and it, and it often sucks. Uh, and so, but was able to look at the, at the, uh, at, at the utilization and see that, hey, during this 13 meg speed test, I was barely, you know, here's the packets out, and then there's the little hump for the, for the packets in, right? Or actually downstream, then upstream. Uh, and, so, uh, and so being able to immediately, when you're, even when you're working on wireless problems, to be able to understand on the Wi-Fi side, or on the wired side, what's going on with your infrastructure devices and, and other points of congestion. Because sometimes, sometimes it isn't figuring out exactly what the problem is, but figuring out what the problem is, is not, right? You know, troubleshooting is, is, a, is, 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 uh, is an art, uh, lost art. Uh, of course, the WLC uh, for this crowd, ground zero, right? Super complicated, uh, right? So we try to, uh, uh, and, and this WLC uh, here is, is uh, is our internal lab one, right? So it's, it's not as robust. I, I've actually seen some of these in, in enterprise environments, but I didn't want to redact everything. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so it's a little bit light, but, but you, know, you can get a sense for the view we're giving you. You can just imagine then looking at the interfaces or the SSIDs or, or, or the APs. And, and, and you, know, you might say, well, how, how am I going to find this, right? If this thing's discovering, thousands of devices on my network, how, how would I even get to it? Well, turns out there's uh, a variety of ways. Right? If you happen to be looking at an AP, and you know, we'll give it to you as a link, and boom, you'll, you'll go that way. But within the, within these, these uh, in this case, 1,400 devices, right? Uh, we have a, a, a filtering model, and, and, and it's a lot like, uh, it's the Amazon model, right? I want men's shoes, okay. Uh, athletic or dress, uh, dress, uh, okay, black or brown, you know. T -t 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 you click, and every time you do the count, right, the set, the domain goes down. And so, uh, so to be able to do that sort of filtering, to quickly pick out any sort of device that, that you want. Uh, is, is key around just even getting to the WLC or any element in your network. Uh, you know, one one thing that I you know as I kind of talked about ending up with this you know Wi-Fi stuff uh, that that kind of was surprising was we never had a uniform view of what's an AP. We have one product that thinks an AP is a BSSID. We have one product that thinks an AP is a band radio. We have another product that thinks an AP is a physical box, right? That, that's, that's not right. So, uh, so as, we, as we discussed it, uh, uh, you know, I really thought, wow, what we really need to do is, is, is have, have both, right? If we could understand the roll-ups of BSSIDs into APs, uh, then, then we could actually represent that. And it turns out AP is a great place as a physical box this is where you can pivot over to the wireline side, right? You, you know, BSSID isn't so good. SSIDs are virtual. Uh, so, so kind of developed this model of how we wanted to, 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 to allow you to, to look at these lists of things, right? And I, this, this one actually stunned me. This, this is just a, a, a neighbor's AP. And you would think residential would be simple, right? This is a... a Xfinity in this case, but I've seen the same thing with Comcast and others. And it's like just this simple resi AP is running seven different BSSIDs and running hidden things. And, and I am thinking this is the public, you know, you can get on Xfinity if you're an Xfinity guy anywhere. We're going to carve out a little bit of the bandwidth and maybe give you five bucks back on your bill. Uh, it's really loosey. Uh, and, uh, and so, uh, but, but it's, just, it's just amazing how, how even in simple single environments, right? If we were showing this as seven APs, or since it's dual band, two APs, but it's really one, one AP, right? Uh, so really thought about how, how you should be able to view your, your Wi-Fi network. Uh, I'm going to flip back to filtering a little bit, right? You're, you got thousands of devices in your network. You want to quickly get to there. I talked about the shopping cart model. Uh, very much implemented here. So, as, and, and it's progressive. As I picked, 
we not only show you for each of the categories, the counts of, of records, if you will, or things in our database, right? But, but as you pick AX, the others drop down. Uh, and so, uh, and, and you can see we build filter chips at the top, right? So this would be an additive model. This is, and you can just keep, you can just whittle down, right, right to, in this case, uh, literally only two SSIDs that are running uh, AX in the 2.4 gig band and are near me, right? And so, and here's just a, here's just a smattering, right? These are all context dependent, but it gives you an idea of, 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 of how you can just sit there and, and slice. Oh, I want the things, I only want to see things on this SSID. Uh, uh, or uh, that are know, running, running. Well, SNMP wouldn't be good. And some of these, some of these don't make sense. But but uh, uh, switches in this subnet uh, that are running SNMP, right? Th things like that. And uh, the, the the SNMP one has been fascinating. I, you know, I've actually been in some public venues where I was amazed that SNMP was enabled. Right? They never. They never change the, the, the community strings uh, from, from public and private, right, out of the box. And so uh, suddenly you're just sitting there, well, holy mackerel, you know, I'm seeing it all. Uh, and so, James, Bill, yes, sir. Uh, there's quite a few people on Twitter um, popping up asking which product this is for. So this is a product that we'll be talking about in the fall. Uh, and, you know, so, so we're not, uh, we're just not quite ready yet. I wanted to show you the, the, the direction and the problems we're trying to solve for you, uh, but we're not ready to talk about price, physical, you know, it's, it's, you know we're handheld people, right? So you, you can imagine that. Uh, but uh, so, uh, so, uh, so stay tuned uh, and more to come uh, later this year. Uh, that said, we didn't want to pass up this opportunity with, with, with you folks. Uh, to uh, to because uh, there's no better uh, judges uh, or, or ways to get the word out, right? So uh, so uh, so yeah, we don't have a product yet, but but stay tuned. Uh, so filtering huge, right? This is how you slice and dice through through unmanageable lists of things. Uh, sorting also key, very context dependent. Whether I'm looking at SSIDs or BSSIDs or or APs or, or, or any of these things, right? But, but uh, in this case, uh, a rich set of sorting capability, right? This just lets you bubble up, right? Sometimes you may not even need filtering because you know, you, sorting gets you know, the tops, right? If you're looking for the, the, the most utilization or the guy with the highest client count, you don't even need to filter, right? You just need to sort. Uh, think, think about Excel. Uh, so uh, another, another area of, of, of uh, design interest for us is, is, is of course, in, in the user experience. Hopefully, you're seeing some of that here. Uh, I saw Keith's post the other day about the, the hamburger stack, right? The, there's the hamburger. There's the kebab, uh, right? So, uh, uh, but, you know, that just speaks to the universalness that mobile devices have just, you know, uh, inculcated our souls, right, uh, to the point of neck pain. Uh, so. Uh, Anyway, tre trend, trending is, is big, right? You, we can show you a number, but if we can show you a trend, and this is an actual measured device uh, that was having some route flap problems, right? Uh, that, uh, that that tells you a completely different story than just seeing, oh yeah, we saw, here's the stats, right? So, so trending is, 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 a, is a big part of our design philosophy because it shows you the frequency of occurrence uh, maybe we're doing a 10 gigabit line rate performance test, and and knowing that every half hour is when you saw loss, and then you're like, oh yeah, that's when the AC turned on, uh, you know, in, in the in the data center. Uh, so uh, frequency of occurrence, channel client usage within a channel, right? There's places you you can stack things. Uh, in this case, I can see that my client basically just owned that that channel during its during some, some sort of operation, uh, adds a huge amount. Of, yes, Keith. Just going to flip back to my slide. Is there is this a, a joining of filtering? It's, it's because a, you're asking two different things. One's from, oh, here's everything that's on the channel. The other is, and I want this one device. Yes. By utilization. So there's the yeah. filtering slice, a whole channel slice, a individual MAC address slice, and can we have yeah. more? 
Yeah, uh, good question. Yeah, so, so in fact, this is a mashup of, uh, of looking at the packets, understanding the, the frame size and I believe the TX rate, and, and then literally adding them over a quantum of time to sum up how much is in flight from that client, uh, coupled with, I'm going to say, some clear channel assessment. Uh, and and I, 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 I'm not, I can't, actually, I, I, I can't express the exact details, but I, I know that we spent a lot of time between, uh, because in, in, in Wi-Fi, a lot of times there's three or four different mechanisms, right? It's things that come out of the out of the chipsets, things that we see. You know, the, 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 I mean, the difference with with a, a Wi-Fi test tool compared to a mobile device is we have a promiscuous radio, right? And we can see everything. So, so some of this is is, is basically looking at every packet and and summing. Uh, some of it is, is looking at at uh, at uh, uh, the air. Uh, Hey, James, yes, sir. quick question. Yeah. Uh, sorry, my brain's on a delay here. Um, the things that, that you mentioned, the graph you were showing where it had kind of like trending over time. Yes. Um, so typically these tools are more point in time yes. tools. So. Oh, you are perfect. All right, hang on. Uh, so. Uh, it's not the first time she's heard that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, we are a handheld, right? right? So. You know, you know we're, we're a handheld people, right? We don't have infinite memory. However, uh, in, in, in almost every point in our thinking, we think 24 hours back in time. And what's really cool is, is when we start to show you these correlated views of signal to noise, utilization, and retries, but then you scroll one of these and all of them scroll, right? So these times always stay in sync. So you can sit there and let it run for half an hour, an hour, overnight. Uh, and, but, and be able to just go swipe back through and then be like, whoa, what was that? Well, I, you know, but it was okay. The retries were low. And, and uh, so. Is there any plans with this to have some way to tell whether the mobile device has been moved? So uh, the cleaner picked it up and moved it down to the other end of the office? And that, all of a sudden the stack. You know, yeah, uh, yeah, it seems like we should be able to sense some of that. Uh, you know, let, I'll have to think about that. That's a good question. Uh, all right. To, to be to be investigated. Uh, so uh, trending, uh, uh, trending, trending adds perspective. I, I was I, I was looking at I was doing a capture on on, on my Roku uh, and uh, and thought, wow, look at that. That's yeah. I said, well, that's not very many packets for streaming a, a you know. Uh, I think it was Endgame uh, uh, in HD. What's going on? And then I realized it was paused. So I, I unpaused and whoa, all of a sudden what I thought was the real thing was, was just a blip, right, relatively, right? So trending just adds this huge perspective, right? We we're, we're obviously can't decode on our boxes, right? It takes 10 seconds for Wireshark just to load up on your laptops. You know, it's, it's massive. Uh, but, but, uh, but we can give you a pretty good sense of am I capturing the right thing from a control data management standpoint uh, by seeing, by seeing the, the activity? Because a lot of times with capture, you do it and then you go kick something, right? And then it does its thing and then you stop the capture. And, and, then, and then, of course, you know, we, we, we let you push it up to Link Live where it shows up and you, and you can put your tags and labels on it and download it right into your Wireshark, right? It's actually a very, very, very nice workflow. Can, can be done remotely, right? This is, you know, experts never where the problem is, so you, somebody can take a tool out and, and you know, and AirCheck does this now, uh, and, and it will only get better. Uh, time machine, I'll skip that now. You know, the, uh, uh, as I, you know, because I, I, I actually follow most of you folks, and, uh, and just, and just in general, I mean, the the the, the mystique around roaming is is, is phenomenal, uh, right? It's just like, oh, you know, when's it roaming? Why is it roaming? What's it, you know, different clients, their behaviors. Is it sticky? Uh, blah 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 blah. So, uh, so while we are a client ourselves, right? And so we certainly have our own characteristics. Uh, we we'd like to give you some insight into that, right? And so. Uh, so again, back to our, our the, the power of time in graphing and the power of 24 hours and being able to see, uh, and these are actually some roams I did uh, yesterday uh, on the flight out, uh, DIA, uh, and, uh, uh, and you know, basically roaming from 
from this AP to that AP. Uh, periodic scans, right? This is when this is when the client picks his head up and goes, "Hey, is there better? Is there better BSSID for me?" Right? And does a quick scan, uh, and uh, and so we we can track the the periodic scans, show the channel from two, AP from two, all these, see they're all linked, right? So I can go drill and investigate any of those. Uh, but more importantly, I can go back, walk the concourse, go back and sit there and go back and look at my Rome events and say, wow, look at that. The, the signal to noise was collapsing. I hit the Rome time. I, I did my reassociation. I, I, I'm not sure yet, right? I, but I think that's actually the, the pick my head up and, and do the periodic scan thing and deciding I got a better offer. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, uh, a little blip in the retries, but look at the TX rate. <laughs> Popped right up, right? So very, very, very good Rome, right? It was, it was going down. I don't know, you know all, the, all the dynamics here, right? Do, do clients roam when the TX rate goes goes downhill, or is it, a, is it a retries or some other heuristic? But this is your internal client. Yes, this, this is our client, and yes. roaming algorithms don't match customers. E exactly. But they could because you write them. E so you could actually put a, I'd like to act like an iOS device, yeah, right. and put an iOS set of yeah. algorithms mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. I, I agree with you, Keith. Uh, it, the only setting we have right now is the, is the DB level, the, the RSSI. Was you doing it just off RSSI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, that's the knob we have. You know, these, these, these Wi-Fi drivers are millions of lines of code. We, we have pretty good expertise in manipulating them, but, uh, but uh, it, you know, I guess what I'd say at this point is roaming is a, definitely an area of interest for us. I know, I know it's a problem. Uh, for for the community and and it's absolutely something. This is this is our our first notion, right? Let's just start to give you a little bit of a of a view into what's going from where to where and 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 some sense. But but you're you're absolutely right. It, it is the characteristics of, of our client radio. And yeah, wouldn't it be great if we had profiles for the top ten mobile devices and uh, and and you could load them? Well, e even uh, before doing something like that, I'd like to be able to see us be able to selectively turn on and off features. What happens to my device if I turn off 811K? What happens if I turn off yeah. R? What happens if I'm on fill in the blank, right? Yeah. Even just even just user controllable turn on, turn off yeah. would be would be a great step towards can you emulate a fill in yeah. the blank? Yeah. I, I I think that should be achievable. So we'll uh, that's that's a great, and, great and idea. I would have thought that Colorado Springs Airport would have been a little closer for you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> It, it is, but they don't have a direct flight to San Jose. Oh. So, uh, 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 so you know, and, and while you're roaming, of course, it would be great to be able to do a ping and understand the the dropout, right? As as you as you roamed, you know, and 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 boy, in in, their, in, in the perfect world, this would be a, a, a ping every 20 milliseconds of a packet of 128 bytes to emulate VoIP RTP frames. Right and and you and because in VoIP it's not about the loss but about the loss burst right that's what you're going to hear and so so to be able to give you those sorts of views but but you know it it, it it's a start uh, and of course the gory details are always under the hood uh, in in the connection log so you can see at any given point uh, as we scanned what we saw uh, and what we decided to connect to and and the authentication process so. Just a thought. Yes. Wouldn't it be awesome when you do that test that you can automatically capture because you're doing a roaming test? Yes, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So you get you get the connection log, you get the active test, you get all the yeah. history, and then you get. You still got it if you need to go to capture. Yeah, yeah, I I, I think you're right. You know, it, it feels like in everything there's a, you know, would you know it'd be great if you saw your problem this way. And then, and then, well, okay, well, if I got to go to the log, and then, all right, packets are the, we always call logic analysis the tool of last resort. I, th I think packets are the tool of last resort. Uh, they, you know, they're awesome, right? And, and, and thank God they exist, but, but, you know, if you can see it on the screen in a couple seconds, I, I and, 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 and the expertise, right, of course, is, is, is held by few, uh, especially in, in Wi-Fi. Uh, so, you know, sometimes it's not about about quantity, but mix, right? And so, wherever possible, we try to give you a sense of what the traffic's about. So you might it might be a broadcast storm, it might be some some crazy multicast 
server gone gone bad. Uh, uh, I actually saw once saw a music on hold server, which was multicasted, but ended up basically flooding an entire network. Uh, so, uh, so that's kind of the end of section two. Uh, so I'll pause for our recorders. And so I'm uh, James Kakaska, CTO for NetAlly. Uh, and we talked about clients and infrastructure in the first two sections. I'm going to shift a little bit into, into simplicity and, and collaboration. Uh, you know, uh, you, you know, every company would like to be up here, oh, this is our color glossy story, right? I, I can tell you every product has, has electro-political struggle behind it, right? I mean, it's just, if anybody's been in high tech, you know that the, sometimes the technology is, is the least of it compared to the organizational uh, uh, politics or, or uh, cannibalization concerns, uh, you, you name it, right? Uh, and so... Uh, Can I interrupt yes. as long as the slide yeah, is up here? Yeah. Um, I've seen it a couple times on Twitter. People are just curious about ongoing support for the G2s. Um, yes. Just if that's yeah. if there's anything to say about that. Yeah. So Hulu is going to talk about uh, about uh, uh, mostly AX on on the air check. Uh, Link Runner G2. Uh, we hit that uh, last year. Uh, you know, we there, there's of course always a balancing act between ongoing support, which we which we uh, take seriously, and and trying to take down some of the, the new things I'm, I'm showing you. But you know, last, last, the last G2 release on Link Runner was, was actually somewhat targeted at this group. Uh, uh, Blake Crone wanted DHCP options. We put them in there for him. We added Capture. Uh, we were running into uh, ubiquity PoE injectors. Uh, people would call us up, hey, your PoE's broke, right? And we'd end up figuring out they were just injecting some cheap 24 volt thing. Uh, sorry, ubiquity, didn't mean it that way. Uh, but, uh, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually how you do HOA and multi-dwelling and hospitality on a budget, right? So, so it's, a, it's a good thing, right? It, it does serve. Uh, it does serve a purpose, but uh, but it, it's not IEEE PoE. So uh, so we added that. Uh, we added let's see, capture DHCP options. Uh, yeah, I think the question yeah. is: is support going to continue for both of those oh, uh, into the future? I think that's yes, the, yeah, the yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. So and, and hopefully you'll take our our <coughs> AX add to to in the, in the G two as, as that uh, as as indicative of that. Right? Okay. We did, while we were trying to do all this other stuff, while we're technology-wise, while we're trying to prop up this new company, we still managed to keep the, the AirCheck G2 relevant. So, uh, so uh, we're, we're working on it. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. Uh, so, you know, I, you all know this, right? But, but boy, I, I, I've learned so much through these products, right? I, you know, RF is just such a cruel teacher, right? It just, it just, you know, I, I, I did a product called Intellitone. Uh, uh, back in 03 and learned that, you know, that if, just depending on what belt buckle you're wearing or how you're standing that day or maybe how much, you know, body moisture you had, it, it you know, you're plus or minus 3 dB. It was, what I really learned on this product is, man, the world is a noisy place. And you would think that, that with a modulated, so we modulated at 455 kilohertz to get above the, this aggressive switch termination that they put in for AC and its harmonics, 60 hertz. Uh, uh, and you would think that if you said, hey, I'm going to see a, a little bit of 455 energy in the knot and then V4 and, you know, and then you demodulate that and, and that that pattern would never occur in nature other than if you were generating it. Oh, right. it turns out, <laughs> a, you know, Maytag washing machine does that when it turns on. Uh, so, I just wonder uh, how many people in the room have used those in their careers? Oh God, yes. Oh, way back in the day. Yeah, there we go. You and me were relics. Yeah. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, man, I, our, you know, you, you know this, right? RF is just brutal, right? It doesn't, it doesn't suffer fools. Uh, and you know, simplicity is not always simple. So, uh, in fact, I think uh, Keith had done uh, uh, link sprinters in his swag bag a few years back. Uh, and uh, but, but boy, if you knew the behind-the-scenes struggle on that thing, uh, just from a you know uh, uh, organizational standpoint, but just from a technology standpoint, so it seems so simple. So I, I kind of cobbled together this artwork again, captured the imagination uh, uh, of, of the team, uh, you know, build a Lego model, uh, <laughs> you know, of, of how this thing ought to be and how it ought to kind of roughly look. 
uh, and, and we started to you know, reimagine what we thought portable network tests would be, right? An asset light thing. You know, this is 2010, right? Smartphones are coming up, clouds emerging, right? And what if we could just pull everything we could out of this thing, make it a sliver of hardware, and and push the the, the view here and, and and the data there, right? So, uh, wow, what what a what a set of learnings. We were of course psyched because there were all these new all these new workflows that, that would come out of that, right? And and uh, you you'd be able to push test results to the cloud, and and wow, what if they what if they just emailed right into your phone? You know, what if every time you ran a test, you had an email? I mean, email's the the, the currency of organizations. If you could forward that email to the to just whoever, hey, what, why am I in this VLAN? What's up? Uh, so uh, I, and boy, what if you could even reply to that email and put in a comment? Hey, I'm in this meeting room at this Jack, uh, and so uh, so you could start to understand the relationship between the port advertisements, uh, like the switch, and and physically where it comes out, get a sense of the of the of the wire the, the wire plant. Uh, but boy, you know, seems seems so simple, right? But you know, just. The, the, the protocols, you know, to be uh, to be learned, uh, and the and the and the building blocks that you need to put together a system like this. You know, if you think about it, 2012, right? Clouds just not, you know, bar barely hobbling along. Uh, you know, the I call it the API economy, right? But but it's 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 all these services that you need to do to provide a a, a cohesive cloud service. It's 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 you know this little guy here also put a little uh, uh, a little uh, Wi-Fi AP in it uh, and uh, and had to serve up HTML so that you could you could connect your phone to it associate it to it and 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 see a local UI if you actually need one if you couldn't get the email or whatever uh, uh, a chunk of intellectual property came out of this in terms of the, the, the design, uh, mechanical as well as, as, well as philosophical. Uh, you know, it, it was a great product, right? We, we, got, we got a lot of good press out of it. Uh, uh, social, in fact, there's, there's Mr. Parsons again, uh, but uh, you, you folks were kind to us uh, and, and we appreciated that. Uh, for me, the, 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 the court of public opinion, which is really Amazon ratings, is, is, is key, right? That's, that's, that's where it's unfiltered uh, and occasionally from your competitors. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, you know, that, that, that was a great thing. So, you know, we sort of created a new product category. You know, that's always going to be our, our goal, as you hopefully saw before. And, and so, uh, uh, you know, now we've got, you know, nettool.io and POC Ethernet and, and and maybe the sidekick's even a little bit this, right? But but just this notion of of, of a of a of, of leveraging other things, uh, and and but now it, it you know ironically what started out as this necessity uh, because we had this sliver of hardware is now actually the cornerstone of, of the product line, right? And and the and the collaboration and you've seen link. Uh, Link Live go through some iterations, uh, but but uh, to accept all the products, uh, in fact, is you know V uh, three here. That was kind of where my tenure started, and you saw all kinds of cloud stuff. You could move profiles around, captures, uh, uh, oh, over the air updates, uh, you know th those sorts of things. So uh, so Link Live is is is, is key to, to to what we're doing, and and we've only continued to. To, to add there, right? What happened, you know, with, which is just about zero touch reporting and maybe throwing out a comment has now, you know, includes all these things being, being pushed into the service. So, you know, but, 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 you know, we're not standing still, right? We have to keep upping our game. So, uh, so, you know, one thing we learned was as we started, you know, kind of pushing out of different parts of the product was that, was that, whoa, there was no central place to funnel these things through to, to, to manage them, and so uh, so start to think about things like uh, a single point that you run through, where hey, if you're actually not connected, you could even manage those results. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Delete it. Uh, but uh, and uh, but 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 to have a common way to. Uh, the job comment, that's a sticky comment. I've, I've been running around for a month, all those screenshots you saw, right? I just put the job comment on there, MFD4, and go now, filter, boom. There, there, there's my, in this case, maybe thousands of screenshots, but, uh, uh, but can put comments about what, what 
oh, I'm going to try to show roaming here, you know, and now I'm going to get a bunch of screenshots for that, right? So, so this common, this common way to funnel results to the cloud. So, so the, the the point is, we were, we, I think we were first in the cloud. In fact, we were one of the first in test and measurement in the cloud, and we're continuing to innovate there, right? And uh, it'll always be a part of our our story. In fact, I think last year in this very forum, we got. Uh, uh, hammered a little bit about not having an open API it was well, well deserved. We, we've we've done that now. We have an open API. We have some customers that have been that have been uh, using it, uh, and so all the results in Link Live are, are can now be made available, integrated into other tools. If you're if you're a real JSON jockey, you could do some custom reporting. Uh, but uh, uh, so that's that's uh, also new. So uh, so I'm gonna. You know, when I started out, I said, "Hey, I'm, 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 I'm really just the POE guy." Uh, but, but even there, uh, you know, we have, we've just worked it, right? We, we, I, I can remember this. this is like some capacitive coupling thing between, uh, between a couple of pairs. That, that was how Cisco was so freaked about putting voltage on the wire for Vodafone phones that it was almost, it's almost like. You know, hard to unlock this thing, right? Because it was a new thing to put DC voltage on common mode across a a, uh, a differential set of set of pairs, uh, and through AF, and then two power loading, and then inline power measurements. Link Sprinter doesn't need batteries. Cold boots off a of PoE tells you the voltage. Link Runner, a whole new game, right? Four pair PoE loading up to 71 watts. Powers off a of PoE, charges off a of PoE. You don't need that silly wall ward anymore. And then we added uh, injector voltage detection. Uh, and then going forward, right? We we well, we ought to be able to load the the injectors. This is actually an injector in a ubiquity thing where uh, where uh, I was trying to load at 13 watts and crapped out at about 11, right? But but you know we so even in even in PoE, right? There there's a lot. There's a lot going on. Uh, so, kind of wrapping up a little bit here. Uh, what I what I really need to say is is, is uh, I'm so appreciative of my R&D team, and and I think one thing that's unique about us is uh, we're, we're a full stack shop, right? I, we have we have uh, industrial mechanical design uh, worried about how you're going to blow air through this thing and cool it if it's if it's if it's uh, running 10 gigabit in your hand. Uh, uh, hardware, boards, processors, radios. I mean, any one of these areas. I mean, you, you, you know, I've worked in companies where there's one guy that just did LCD displays, right? That was his whole his whole expertise. Uh, and so, uh, uh, all that. Of course, FPGA when you need it for the accelerants. Uh, Linux analysis middleware. I think you saw in the earlier slides the results of, of these two bodies of work. Uh, Android. Uh, and, and that's been a huge learning curve, right? Fortunately, we took most of that down on Link Runner G2. Uh, and, you know, and I should say, I didn't even touch on this. I meant to do a slide, but you, know, you can still run the Cisco wireless LAN control. Right? All, every Wi-Fi vendor, everybody that makes something that plugs into the network has an app, right? And, and there are certain times that, that, that they can do things that may not be available through SNMP, right? Because they, they control the app, they control the innards of the device, right? So they can, they can do whatever they want. They're not bound to, to a uh, public interface. Uh, and so, uh, uh, so, you know, the ability to run apps, uh, you know, we started our proprietary, our, our, our uh, curated app store, right? We have a couple hundred apps in there. Those are all from users, uh, but, you know, uh, Cisco, Aruba. I mean, everybody's got a, everybody's got a, 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 a WLC app or a Switch app or uh, or things like that. So Android, huge set of learnings there. And of course, cloud. Right, uh, boy. If you ever want to feel old as a software guy, you just talk to the cloud guys and hear them talking about Mongo and Redis. And this, was, you know, you know. I, fortunately, the algorithms and, and computer science truths haven't changed. But but the the, the the names you have, right? But but huge, uh, huge, uh, uh, huge learnings in, in in the cloud space over the last five years, right? So we, we intend to bring that forward. We 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 retain that expertise. We we retain expertise. Uh, we got guys that are here with me back in 2005, right? In in, in fact, through a couple of these places. Uh, I'm sorry, 1995. Uh, so uh, so we're, we're we got. We got 
old guys, we've got new guys, but we're, we're working it, right? So uh, the, uh, uh, the, the last thing I'll thank my, my team for uh, is, uh, and, and I team that in my is it's too strong, right? Because we're, we're, we just work together. Uh, but, uh, but is uh, uh, they kind of made travel fun again, right? I used to really just hate going on trips and, and uh, maybe still do, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I saw this article and it just, it just tickled me. It was a couple days ago, you know, how travel makes you smarter and wiser. You know, it just makes it, for me, it just makes me older and tireder. But, uh, but, but you know, to, to, to jump on, a, uh, and I, 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 every flight, every airport, you know, I, 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 you know, it's almost like, hey, a delay, great, I can, you know, uh, but, but to see, you know, the names of the passengers on the flight, right, coming out of the clients, to see that they're, you know, that they're cheap in terms of their APs, to, to see people with personal hotspots and then their phone connected to them, uh, to see that the uh, flight attendants have a hidden SSID that they use, right? So I'm, I'm in there, I'm going, oh, I wonder what this is used for. I wonder what those are, some Apple. And then one of them, MDS advertised, and then sure enough, 20 minutes later, there was Kim walking down the aisle, right? So, so uh, you know, but you, that's how troubleshooting is, right? It's, it's, you just try to, it's clues, it's, it's working with, with what you got. And, and even, even uh, did a, a, a speed, uh, an iperf between my phone and, 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 and a tester uh, on the flight. Uh, and, uh, and turns out I could get about 31 megabits. Also turns out, of course, you don't have to, you don't have to pay, right? You get that in the free connection before you put in the credit card. All the clients are, are, are seeing each other. It's not gated, right? So, so uh, without paying a dime, I was able to, to run uh, iPerfs between uh, to my phone and, and, and a tester. So pr pretty, pretty, it actually has made uh, the last months very, very interesting in terms of uh, in terms of uh, just just learning, right? Because I'm a student of this, like, like I, I think we all are. Some of you have PhDs, and some of us have bachelors. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's been fun.